Today I'm Luke from Drifter and uh, I'm here with uh, Kaido and we're heading out to Barrington Tops again as we often do. Um, not much of a day. We forecast 40 mils of rain tonight so it's going to be pissing down all night but you know that doesn't stop us. Uh, we've got the bike trailer on the back so the new 8x5 bike trailer and Kaido's loaded up the CRF 250 and uh, the XR250 so to, um, hopefully the rain will finish tonight and tomorrow we'll go for a ride around and have a bit of fun and I really wanted to try the trailer out. Um, you know it's a five foot wide trailer it's so a little bit wider than a normal normal one which is four foot so it's sticking out a little bit so I have to be a little bit careful on the tracks and uh, uh, we've got the Yali Cab rooftop tent and the, um, the awning and uh, keen to sort of give that a bit of a try out so see what it's like camping with the trailer and uh, we're going to do that tonight so as always you know it's getting late we um, had a massive day today just wanted to get away at three o'clock but it was must have been 5 30 before we got away so it'll be dark you know um, pretty soon but that's what's often like you know Friday Arvo always hard to get away and you know racing around trying to chuck things in we um, I wanted to change the tyres for the um, the new Mickey Thompson uh, Badger Claws, but we didn't get time to do that. So we've got our old tyres on the MTZ, so they're probably um, only 40% left on them, so they're not going to go real well in the mud. The trail has, um, you know, got a bit of weight in it, and uh, I forgot the bloody Max tracks as well. Uh, forgot to chuck them in, so haven't got those. Uh, luckily the winch is working though, um, the winch had been for a lot of mud and a lot of water and it, it totally seized up so you know we just um, didn't uh, service it as often as we should have and it just totally seized, it was rusted like anything so um, anyway we've got a new motor in the winch so at least that's working which is going to be handy and uh, the lockers are working as well so uh, you know that should be okay. And, uh, but yeah, this track's going to be super muddy. And we're going to go, we'll try and go an easy way in. Because we're just running so late. And uh, hopefully the creek's not too flooded. It's hard a bit of this road, kind of way, it looks at it. Yeah. wonder how far they've gone. <coughs> this, this, road. this road's always been gravel A's. And they've just tarred it, so we're interesting to see how far it goes. So, um, anyway, something different today. Um, we're going to our secret spot, place we often go to, and uh, but this time, 8x5 bike trailer. And um, we're going to zoom around the bikes tomorrow and have good fun. So, we'll stop up here if we can before it gets too dark and just quickly show you the setup before it gets totally covered in mud. And, uh, and we'll show you um, what we've got on and everything like that. So. We'll try and do that shortly. Yeah, this, uh, look at that. This used to be so slippery here, you know, heavily gravelled road and these corners were deadly, eh? So I suppose, no worries, bro. Yeah, so just pull up quickly to show you the trailer before it gets too dark and before you pull all the gear out uh, tonight. And, uh, but yeah, we've got a, the new big toolbox on here, so heaps of room in there. Haven't even got much in there except uh, a little fire pit, so quite a bit of room. Uh, the shower's on the other side, and you can see with these two motorbikes in there, these um, I wanted heaps of tie down points, you know, just one, two, or three or something is not enough, you know. So we've designed this here up, it's on angle lines, so that's nice and strong, so it's angle line and this welded on top. And you can see it's just limitless tie down points because you might put a quad in there or other things or just gear. So uh, I'm really happy with that. Um, see how the bikes travel. We've got little um, channels for the bikes to sit in. You know, you really got to have that. That's important. I mean, you have to have that tie down bikes, otherwise they the wheels slide out. And um, so, yeah, should be fine. Um, in here as well, we've got these big gear bags. These are awesome. So. I've got, we got one each, and we got our helmets, boots, and all that riding gear in those, so that's actually the, um, 
the Weber, the baby Weber cube bag, but it's uh, heavy duty canvas, uh, really good size, it's grey as a gear bag, so um, you know, we got all our motorbike gear in there, one each, and just chuck it in, you know, so it's all waterproof and everything. The only cab shadow on, so be handy to set up that tonight. Um, and just jump up in the toolbox cutter, we'll show you this new little rack. Now we've got a bunker for Kaido. Well, I reckon we'll probably both sleep in here tonight because it's wet and cold and late. But look at that, we made up. So that's a tray um, goes on top of the, uh, you know, your, your roof rack or anywhere. You can see we've got this on on these bars. So you've got like a roof rail bars. If you've got you know a twin cab or a vehicle, you've only got roof rails, which a lot of people do. It's hard to put an Oz on there because the Oz will sort of dip in between the bars. So you whack this on. And then you can tie lots of things on it. Now we've got, just got a bunker here. We could tie two bunkers. You could put whatever you want, jerry cans. These holes here are designed for um, just the water to, to drip it, to get out, basically. Uh, first one we made, we probably don't need as many holes. And you've got slots on this outside here as well. So you can tie things on. But these, these are not for tying down, that's just to let the water out. Now on the side here, we've got a loop strap. So you can see how that's working there. Loop strap on the side, you know, metal buckle. Perfect, you know, so you can just um, tie that on really easy. The alley cab's good too, nice, you know, solid top. You can put more, you could easily put a little roof rack on there and put more gear like a, a rhino rack and fit on that or whatever. So, um, you know, these are good because you can carry a lot of gear on top. <coughs> so, yeah, we'll have these on the web soon. This drifter thing is not quite right, as you can see. The idea was when you look at it from underneath, you could see drifter written properly, but. And uh, yeah, so let's have a look in the back. The port. Right. Yep. Oh, that's right. Look, see up there? Yeah, see up there so you can see Drifter written properly up there. And same here. So that was the idea, the way it looks like it's written backwards, but it's right from underneath. Four jerrican holders, really good. Just still got more room, side boxes. Um, this door. A little bit heavy duty, we're going to reduce the weight of this door, but working great. We've got the, the latches here, that lifts up and this drops down, so that's working good. Um, side boxes, just for gear. Gas bottle here, heaps of jerry can holders. And here we've got the shower, so, um, and the pumps in here as well. So one until we get back tomorrow, we'll probably have a nice hot shower, hook up the gas. And also got the pump which we can uh, hose the bikes down a little bit. So that'll be handy. And uh, that's it really. A lot of space at the front. You can chuck up the gear bags here. We've got the rubbish bag. And um, you know, we're trying to keep things simple. Uh, we don't want to, you know, go overboard because everything you put on costs money, you know. We've got a water tank underneath, but that's fairly simple still. And uh, we've got a fridge in the truck. We've got a, a kitchen in the truck. And, but there's still a lot of room in the middle there, you know, where you can just chuck gear. We've got a, a tarp in there and chairs and, you know, a fair bit of gear in there still as well. So, um, yeah, that's the trailer. And if all goes well, we'll um, show you our camp tonight when we get in there and get the fire going. Uh, find that we didn't get any firewood, no max tracks, no firewood. And uh, so we've got to cut some wood, get a fire going, starve and hungry and um, soon we'll be wet and cold as well, so that's perfect, you know. If you're wet, cold and hungry, then you really ha know you're having fun. Anyway, we'll keep going. Yeah, so it looks like we've, um, we might just be able to set up camp in the light car, which would be handy. And, uh, a lot of roos in this paddock, eh? Yeah. You can see them there. There's going to be hundreds of roofs up here. Yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. Jump through the fence. Beautiful time of the afternoon now. So, how long since you've been up here, mate? Um, last time was, oh, here's where we dropped the damn over here. It was like this too, it was wet. Yeah. We dropped the BMW right there, except that was full of water. And we crashed on that 
fantastic day, really. Yeah. Might be able to put the abs in a minute too, eh? Mm. Put him in that view a little bit. So last time we were up here, was that, was that with, <coughs> be with Roman doing the cooking in that? Or? Oh, I think it was with Corey and Andy. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the boys trip here. Boys trip. That's a good trip, isn't it? Yeah. Watch the blinds. No one will fly out. I'm going to be a good test. Let's get out and um, have a look, eh? Let's do the rain, rain sort of go down right now. Alright. We've only been going two minutes in the mud and they're already covered. Anyway. Oh, what a beautiful time of the night, eh? Yeah. Just the last half hour before. Oh, some so. cows over there. Did you do the hub on this side? Hey? You got the hub on this side? Yeah. All done. Look at these tyres, eh? There's not much grip on them. <laughs> yeah. Down a bit. I think we should. Yeah? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we'll do it quick. Yeah, we're just going to let a bit of air out of the tyres. The truck's pretty rocky here. And uh, just a little tool from ARB. You can buy them from many companies, but uh, I'm not even quite sure what it's called. Some sort of deflator. How it works, you can see in there, all it's doing is going gonna, gonna to screw onto your valve stem and, and screw out the uh, the valve inside. So you wind them on, just like that, All right? And then you push this in. You can feel it uh, go around the valve, and then you just wind him out. And then you've got your gauge there, so third. So I'm just going to go. I'm going to go 24, and uh, now you've got to be a little bit careful with these because you're mucking around with the valve. So just be, you know, careful you don't cross thread and things like that. So, uh, but it's the best way of doing it, really. I've tried the. We've had straw and tire deflators for a long time. They're okay on the beach, but it's never really that accurate. You just, you know, um, these are the best way of quickly deflating your tires by far. We already let these tires down on the trailer last time we went out riding on a bush track with me and Kai a few weeks ago. Um, I think we let them down to 30, but we'll just take these down to 24 as well, um, just to help stop it bouncing around so much. Really important to make sure you put your caps back on as well, eh? You know, it's only a cap, but it makes a huge difference. If you get mud and crap into your valve, then, uh, you know, it can just, your tires can get let down because you've just got mud and dirt in there. So particularly if you're using one of these, you've got to make sure you put your caps back on. Yeah, that's better now, eh? So we've got 24 all round, and um, just takes that little bit of um, bounce out of the tyres, riding much smoother. And, uh, 24 too is something you can drive home on, so I don't really like taking the tyres down further than what I can drive home on. Once you start hitting 22 and 20, you really should pump them back up before you hit the road, you know, and um, that's a big job, you know. Getting it all out again, and it's all just mucking around, so.
mate. It's so slippery. It's hard to believe, you know, when when the mud gets wet, just how slippery it can be. And it totally changes everything. We'll have trouble getting up there tomorrow. Eh? And that's the truck we took the uh, GS800 up, mate, eh? Uh, can't <laughs> believe it. Like this as well. Yeah, it was, can't believe we made it. I don't think the creek will be up too much. We've had a pretty dry run for a while. Oh yeah, we've had a bit of rain. Holy crap. Oh, someone's chucked even logs in there, look. It would be good if you just got here half an hour early, mate, eh? Oh, it's going to be mad on the box now, eh? Yeah. Holy crap. Where are you getting different off there? Look out for that. I might have touched that. That's going to be great. The film is coming out of here tomorrow, eh? Yeah. Now we've uh, sort of set up camp with this. In front of this trailer here's got so much mud on it. This stone guard is just covered in mud and you know you just get mud all over you. So what I'm doing, hook the hose up to the pump. I've already washed it a bit. Look at that. I've just put a little bit of water on this here, not much, but just so you can step around here and not get mud all over you. Eh? And uh, yeah, pretty handy. Give the truck a bit of a wash too, could I? Haven't washed it for a while, so I yeah. don't need to worry about it now. Bloody oh, yeah. yeah, so we've got the uh, shadow wing up, and uh, we've also put the rapid wing up because, again, it's so quick and easy. The reason the rapid wing is good on, on the vehicle as well, because we can leave the doors open. You know, if we just had the awning on the trailer then, you know, rain's getting in your doors. And uh, also in the back. So it's uh, really good to have that, you know, coverage around your doors. It can pour down rain. The good thing with the rapid wing is it covers this space at the back here. Alright, so it's got that extra flat, which is really important. doesn't look much, but... That stops the rain coming down in here, and uh, we can leave those doors open all night. And the other good thing with the raffle wing, you know, uh, with, we can just drop these down a little bit, and it just feels so much more cosy, you know, because it's just lower and less, you know, wind coming in. Whereas the uh, shadow wing, you can't do that. They're up here, you know, the height of that. And you can't you can't move them. So um, you know. And the other thing, you don't have this little coverage at the back here, so you can always get water drip down in this area. Now it's okay here, but uh, on a vehicle, it's quite important to have that bit of coverage over there. So uh, well, we've got a couple of chairs there. We've got our drifter shopping bags. These grocery bags are the best thing ever. It's probably my favourite product. Look at that. It's a six ounce, six ounce canvas, so it's a little bit thinner material, but it's, it's still strong. It's really good quality strain made canvas, so they'll last forever. And nice good straps. But being a little bit thinner, you can scrunch them up easier. So when you go in the shops, you haven't got a big bulky thing of bags. So they scrunch up nice and small. And this is a large one, and a small one. So you get a Woolies and fill it all up. And uh, these are great. Now also when you're camping you can, you know, you go to the uh, showers with them, put your towel in there and your toiletry bag. So, such a great little bag. And because we're making so many of them, we've, well, you know, done a pack. They're only like 20 bucks each. We would normally it'd be 30, at least 35, I think, a normal grocery bag. So a bit lighter material. And because we're making bulk, we can get them cheaper. So, got the little Uniflame fire grill. 
And Connor's got the heat feed starter going. And um, that's nice for here, just light and whack that on. So we'll let that get going and then, yeah, get some food on. The rain's eased off quite away, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so I've got the heat feeds in. These are good little five of these. So light. Look at that too. If you want to move it around, <laughs> look at that, eh? It's good, isn't it? Little tool holder, so you can just chuck your tongs on there. Oh. Little tool holder, so you can just slip those on there. This is really um, great. Now, there's a lot of heat in that. Whew. So, this little thing here from Uniflame. And this, you could use this for the snow peak um, mesh as well. Look at that. That is a handy little tool. Because you can't use your hand for that because it's just so hot. And it looks a bit funny how this all works, but I mean, it does work. Look at that. So. Alright, whack some uh, tops on. You want photo? Hey? You want two of these? Yeah, right. Let's have two each. Yeah, and then we'll cook some for lunch. Alright. Alright? Yep. I'm not good. I'm getting more. Yeah, I know. And your boys here tonight. The secret to cooking mushrooms. Let's spray on there first. So you've got to cook the mushrooms that way first. Because then when you flip them over, they just all the juice gets in there and just it's really good. Now I've got corn in here somewhere but here it is. And one of these too, eh? Alright. Alright mate. Hook in. So, because it's a bloke's dinner, we're not even going to worry about knife and fork or plate, because then we have to wash them up, so it's going to be a paper towel dinner. Pretty good, buddy. Eh? Yeah, we've got a three course meal here, so first course was chops, second course was corn, and the third course that, mushrooms. So that's pretty good. Being able to cook a nice three course meal out in the bush. Corn on the cob on the fire is pretty good. Really easy, you know. This is going to be wet tomorrow on the bikes. I know, we're going to get so muddy. Mm.